Stuff sweet potatoes three ways. I'm gonna show you three different ways that I make sweet potatoes. One will be a Southwest sweet potato with black beans, peppers and onions, and salsa. The second one is gonna be a Mediterranean sweet potato that's gonna be filled with roasted chickpeas and have the flavors of lemon and parsley. And the third one that we're gonna do is going to be a barbecue sweet potato that will have barbecue tempeh and coleslaw. So the first thing we need to do is cook our sweet potatoes. Since I'm making three different varieties, I'm just making three sweet potatoes today. One thing you should do when you pick out your sweet potatoes, if you're making more than one, pick some that are about the same size because if they're like very different sizes, they're gonna take different amounts of time to cook. So I have my sweet potatoes here. I have given them a really good scrub. So I'm just gonna give this a little dry with my paper towel. And we are just going to poke these with a the fork a few times so the steam can escape. This will prevent your sweet potatoes from bursting in the oven, which would be just really terrible. What a mess that would be, right? So these will cook for about an hour on 400 degrees. And while that's happening, we can prep our other ingredients. So the first potato that we're starting with today is a Southwest potato. It's going to be filled with onions and peppers, black beans, corn. We're going to make an avocado crema and then we're going to top it with salsa. It is going to be very, very flavorful. So the first thing we're going to do is prep our cashews for our, our avocado crema. So I just have one half a cup of raw cashews. I'm just going to put that in here. So I just put that in my, my little blender cup and I'm gonna add half a cup of boiling water. And I'm just gonna let that sit until we're ready for it at the end. That'll help, that'll just help soften the cashews so that we can get a really creamy sauce. In the meantime, we're gonna dice our onions, pepper, and get those sauteing. I'm gonna use a medium onion. I'm using a sweet onion. If you know me, I almost always use a sweet onion because they don't make me cry. You can use whatever onion that you prefer. And some of these Onions or peppers we're gonna actually put in our black beans today. No sizzle there. was definitely not ready like I thought oh here we go it's starting to sizzle now I'm just gonna cut this pepper There's so many different ways to cut a pepper I am always fascinated when I watch other people cut peppers to see how they do it a couple garlic cloves to go into our, our red pepper and onion mixture. Let's do three. So I sauteed my peppers and onions 
in a tablespoon of oil, a neutral oil. But if you don't use oil, you could definitely saute with just water. Do what works for you. are starting to get some color I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my minced garlic I don't want my garlic to start burning that's why I always put it in towards the end of whatever I'm sauteing I find that garlic does burn very easily and that is not a flavor that I want in my food smelling the aromas of the garlic which is already starting to happen all right we're gonna call this one done just gonna remove that from the heat the next thing that we are gonna cook is our black beans I've got I just decided to use canned beans this time I know that canned beans are a really common product used by most people because it saves you so much time this is organic. I just bought this from my local Costco. But one thing I did do is I did rinse it three times. One, I wanna remove all the excess sodium that's in here. Rinsing it does take away quite a bit of the extra salt that's in this product. And also, I don't like the juice it's in. If you're concerned about being farty or gassy from consuming beans, when you buy cooked beans, rinse them. That will take away a lot of those naturally occurring elements that cause those you know that gas so we're really just going to heat these through that's going to go in our pan and i'm going to put in some of these onions and garlic to help give our beans some flavor i'm just probably putting in about a quarter cup this the rest we're going to save to top our potatoes So to my beans, I'm gonna add, I forgot to buy limes. I always keep this in my pantry just for those times that I forgot to buy limes. And this one is 100% real lime juice, so I don't really feel concerned that we're getting something else in this bottle. So I'm just gonna give that a good squeeze. It's probably about half a tablespoon. Normally I would put chili in this, but I just realized that I'm out. So I'm putting like a teaspoon of fake sriracha. This is Trader Joe's fake sriracha, but it's still pretty good. Nothing is like the real sriracha, am I right? And I'm going to do half a teaspoon of cumin. And I'm going to do half a teaspoon of onion powder. And we're just going to let that come up to temperature. ready. You can add an additional salt if you want, but I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And I just want to give these black beans a little bit of a taste before they go on our potatoes. That's what they look like. bit of a kick from that sriracha. I can taste the acid from the lime juice. I am going to do a pinch of salt. And those guys are basically ready. There's one other thing I wanted to show you while we make this video. If you notice, I did not throw out all of my skins and end pieces from my pepper and my onions and my garlic. And the reason is because I freeze these and then when I have enough, I make a stock. 
I don't ever buy vegetable stock. I just make it myself. It's actually really, really easy. And let's be real, does vegetable stock that you buy at the store ever really taste very good? I, I don't think it does. I think this just has loads more flavor. So it's just gonna go in the freezer. And when I have like four to six containers, that's when I make my stock. So we have almost all of our elements for our Southwest sweet potato ready. The last thing that we actually need to make is avocado crema. If you remember when we began this recipe, we soaked half a cup of cashews and half a cup of boiling water and we let that sit. To that, I'm going to add one small avocado. This is a really easy but full of flavor cream. And if you are plant-based, you probably, like me, generally won't buy the creams that are available at a store just because they're usually filled with soybean oil and things like that. So this is just an easy one. To, it's just really great. It's great on tacos and anything Mexican or Southwest. I just really love it. So I'm gonna do one little pinch of salt. And the last thing that I wanna throw in is a couple tablespoons of cilantro. Oh, that's not the last thing because I have to put in the lime juice. And again, I do not have any limes today, so I'm using this lime juice that I always keep on hand. I just put about a tablespoon in, and now I'm gonna go blend this. As you can see, it is too thick. I need more liquid. And I always say that it's better to start with less liquid and as more as needed. As you make this, I would just do one or two additional tablespoons of, I'm just gonna use water. You could also use a plant milk if you'd rather. So I'm just gonna put about two more tablespoons of water in here and blend this again. Wow, it is really creamy. Doesn't that look beautiful? It's kind of hard to see with the light, but it's really thick. You could make this whatever thickness you like. I'm gonna go with it a little bit thick today because I want it to be a little bit more like sour cream. It's now time to assemble our delicious potato. So my sweet potato is cooked. You could tell it's cooked when you give it a squeeze. It just feels very, very soft. And it's also sticky because of those juices. So I'm just gonna cut it down the middle, not all the way through and not all the way to the ends, and just give that a little squeeze from the ends and it kind of puffs up the potato. Doesn't that look good? I could eat this just like this, it would be amazing. But what I am gonna do is I just wanna mix this up a little bit. And I'm actually gonna mix in some of the onions and red pepper that we cooked into this potato. Oh, it smells so good, you guys. Man, I'm definitely getting hungry. I'm gonna throw on some of the black beans that we made. It's corn season here where I live in Colorado, which means we eat a lot of corn in August and September. So I've got this corn. I just threw this in boiling water for five minutes. That makes a perfect ear of corn. I'm gonna cut it off the kernel and we're gonna use this in the recipe. It is very hot. I don't know if you can see that steam. But you do not have to use fresh corn if you don't want. I think frozen corn is a great alternative. Most of the frozen corn that I buy is just corn. It doesn't have anything else in the package. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some of this on top. Oh, what the hell, let's do the whole thing. You know, all of these ingredients, guys, you can use as much as you want. You don't have to use the amount that I use. If you don't like corn, you don't have to use corn. 
If you don't like black beans, you could use pinto beans or white beans or just any kind of beans that you actually like. Part of my goal on this channel is to show people how I cook things so that you guys can have an idea of how to cook wholesome ingredients that are very delicious. All right, so we only have um, three more things to add to this. I'm putting the avocado crema on here. I'm just gonna use just a tablespoon or so. And I'm gonna just chop a little bit of cilantro for the top. Again, you don't have to use cilantro if it's not your favorite. I know a lot of people don't like it. And I'm not gonna use it for this potato, but I do have some salsa. Salsa would also be fantastic on this. You guys could really just make this any way that you like. Doesn't it look amazing and delicious? I am very excited to eat this. We're gonna taste all three of these potatoes at the end. So for our, our Mediterranean sweet potato, we are going to make some roasted chickpeas. These aren't gonna be the roasted chickpeas that most people think of. We're not gonna cook them until they're crispy because that may be kind of off-putting for the potato. But we are gonna cook them until they're cooked through with all of the flavors and just taste really great. So I'm starting with two cups of chickpeas. This is gonna be about a can and a half drained. And I just have them on this clean kitchen towel. My goal is to make them very dry. So if we wanna roast them, we just don't want them to have any liquid. So I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a roll just to get them all dry. Great. Looks like they're pretty dry. So I'm just gonna pour them in my bowl. And so a lot of times people make roasted chickpeas with oil and seasonings. I'm not gonna use oil today, I'm gonna use some tahini. All right, so I am going to put in just about a tablespoon of tahini. That's gonna help all of my seasonings adhere. And the one I use is just an organic one from Trader Joe's, nothing fancy. And I'm gonna put in some paprika. I'm gonna use about half a, half a teaspoon. And some onion powder, the same half a teaspoon. And garlic powder. Okay, and I have a teaspoon of garlic. And the last thing I'm gonna do is just a pinch of salt, which you can obviously leave out if you're SOS free. We're just gonna give that a nice little mix until it's all incorporated. All right, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna throw this on my silicone baking sheet. And that's gonna go in the oven. So for the Mediterranean potato, while your potato cooks, while your chickpea cooks, chickpea, while your chickpeas cook, I've also put some broccoli in a pot to boil. This is just one head of broccoli. I just put it in some salted water. I'm gonna boil it for about probably five to seven minutes. I like for, the, for them to be fork tender and they're just not quite there yet. It's gonna be probably another minute or two. You could also use, use steamed broccoli or you could roast your broccoli, whichever you like. But we're just gonna to put together a really quick sauce for this potato. You know, if you don't play around with sauces, I highly recommend just trying some basic sauces. Sauces elevate every dish and they don't have to be unhealthy. So we're just gonna make a little quick Mediterranean sauce to go on top of our potato and here's how I do it. I'm just gonna use a couple spoonfuls of this tahini that we have previously talked about. This is just 
gonna make a really delicious, delicious, vibrant sauce. I'm gonna use half a lemon. I squeeze this through my hand because I do not want to get seeds in my in my uh, sauce. This one is extremely juicy. Wow. Might even be more than we need. Let's see. And to the sauce, I'm just gonna add a little bit of onion powder. little bit of paprika I'm gonna put in a pinch of salt and I'm gonna do one garlic clove this isn't a whole lot of sauce I don't want this to be overly garlicky one. There's brown spots in there. I'm just going to cut that off. So I'm just going to do a really quick mince on this garlic today. One thing I do want to add to this is a little bit of pepper, but let me give this a stir and see how it's tasting. It's going to be creamy because the base is tahini. Most of my sauces have a base of some type of nut or seed. Sometimes my sauces start with a small piece of like a firm tofu. This is very thick. So this is supposed to be a sauce, but as you can see, it's not very saucy. So I'm gonna mix in a little bit of water. And just loosen this right up. I'm gonna turn this broccoli off because I'm pretty sure it's cooking to death now. better now. So you can make, if you make the sauce, you can make it any thickness that you like. But let me give this a little bit of a taste. Creamy from the tahini. I can taste the lemon juice. I can taste, oh, I forgot an ingredient. Whew, I forgot two ingredients. I'm just going to finely chop a little bit of parsley to add into this. Just about two teaspoons. I'm not going in with a ton. I really, I find that parsley can have a strong flavor at times. And while this is going to be really great in the sauce, I really don't want to get a big mouthful of parsley. The other thing that I need is a little bit of pepper in here. And because we have lemon juice, I just want to put like a teaspoon of maple syrup to just balance out that acid. And if you didn't get to see me chop the parsley, I apologize. I don't know what's wrong with me. Ooh, it's looking good. I think I just want to thin this out a tiny, tiny bit. So it's a little bit more saucy, a little bit less thick. And this is what it looks like. 
gonna give this another taste. That's really good. That tastes great, okay. The other thing that I wanna do real quick, is I just wanna pull out some of this broccoli so it can drain for a second. I don't want this broccoli to be wet when it goes into my potato. Let me get a little bit more. And I'm just gonna let that sit there and drain for a minute. I'm pretty sure this will work. There we go. It's time to assemble our second potato. This is our Mediterranean potato. The potato is cooked, as you can see, it squeezes very easily. So again, I'm just gonna cut it. I'm not gonna cut the ends, and I'm not gonna cut it all the way through. Give it a little squeeze at the ends, and this the potato will start popping up. I just like to fluff the potato a little bit. And this recipe, I'm gonna go in and put in just a little bit of the sauce that we made, and I'm gonna mix that in with the potato. You know it's just gonna flavor that potato more, but I'll tell you what, I really could just eat this just like it is. I love sweet potatoes just as they are. All right, now our potato is all flavored. So the other ingredients we have to add are the chickpeas that we cooked in the oven, the broccoli, and hummus. So the way that I would like to layer this, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put in some of our broccoli pieces. Man, that is looking good. And then I'm gonna put in, this is just hummus that I made. I'm not sharing that today because that just is a recipe all on its own. But you guys can make your own hummus or buy some hummus. There's some really great store-bought hummuses out there. And now I'm gonna add in some of the chickpeas that we made. We gotta boost that protein, huh? And then I just wanna drizzle on a little bit of our sauce. Man, is this looking fantastic. And lastly, I'm gonna just top, top with this, just a small amount of chopped parsley. Again, parsley can be a very strong flavor. If you're not used to using it in foods, I suggest you start with a small amount. All right, we're just gonna sprinkle on a little bit of parsley on the top. And here's our delicious Mediterranean potato. Doesn't that look good? And the last potato that we're making today is the barbecue potato. I'm super excited about this one. This is a new potato for me, but I think it's gonna be really amazing. In a perfect world, we would make the following two components before we cook the potato. We're doing a barbecue tempeh and we're doing coleslaw, which I promise you is gonna be so amazing on this potato. So the first thing we're gonna do is marinate our tempeh. We're really not gonna be able to marinate it very long for the show because I wanted to show you how it works. If you even have a couple of hours to marinate your tempeh before cooking, it's gonna have a little bit more of that barbecue flavor. But let's go ahead and cut up this tempeh and get the sauce on it. Today I'm using Trader Joe's organic tempeh. I don't know if Trader Joe's um, exist where you live, but the Trader Joe's where I live has tempeh for about $4 less a packet. So this is like $2.29, and the one at my store is like $6. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this guy up. Tempeh is always double packaged. At least all the ones I've ever seen. And tempeh is ju just fermented soybeans, guys. It has a lot of protein, if you're worried about protein in your diet. A 
Another thing I'd like to say about this tempeh is if you've had it before and you find it bitter, you can just boil this in a pot of water for 10 minutes and that's going to take away most of those bitter notes. It doesn't really bother me, plus I'm cooking it in barbecue sauce, so I think it's going to be okay. But you guys should definitely do what makes you happy. So I'm going to cut these in kind of smallish pieces. But you guys could definitely cut this however you like. So I'm just going to throw this in a container. And um, I'm going to add some barbecue sauce. So this is barbecue sauce that I make. Oh my God. I don't think I can share this recipe with you because I'm literally considering getting this bottled. It is so fantastic. It's sweet in the front and then just those kind of like spicy or like spicy flavors hit you in the finish and it's just kind of like a slow burn at the end. It's really, really good. I'm gonna stop bragging. Let's put some of this in our tempeh. You just really need enough to coat your tempeh. You wanna get all of those different sides of each tempeh piece covered. I'm just gonna go in with a little bit more. So if I had time, I would just throw this in the fridge for a couple of hours at least and let it sit, but we don't have time because of the show. So I'm just gonna throw this on a baking sheet and it's gonna go in the oven. So since I don't have time to marinate this, I'm just gonna throw this on a baking sheet. I recommend that you use either a silicone baking sheet or parchment paper just so it'd be less of a messy cleanup. And I'm just gonna throw this in the oven at 400 for about 20 minutes. Just enough to cook the tempeh and cook some of the sauce onto the tempeh. Here we go. Right now that we have the tempeh marinating and it's actually cooking, we need to work on our coleslaw. So coleslaw, in my opinion, should have a creamy element, a sweet element, and an acidic element. For the creamy base, a lot of people like to use a vegan mayonnaise. I'm actually gonna do cashews today. So I have a half a cup of raw cashews. It's gonna go in my blending cup, and in that I'm gonna add a half a cup of boiling water and I'm just gonna let that sit for a few minutes. So let those cashews soften. And so let's prepare the vegetables for our coleslaw. Today I'm gonna use a purple cabbage. I have this beautiful guy right here. And I'm gonna use a carrot. And that's gonna just be the only vegetables that I use today. Sometimes I will hand shred it. It's actually my preferred method. I'm going to do four cups of vegetables for this slaw today. And I'm just going to hand, hand shred this. You could use a food processor. Um, you could use a mandolin. Just whatever works for you. You can choose the thickness of your, ca of your cabbage pieces. Just remember that as the cabbage sits in the acid, it will soften. The acid basically starts cooking the cabbage and carrots. So I'm just gonna measure this out as I go to make sure that I have four cups. Coleslaw that I make for the house never seems to last very long. Everybody really loves it. And I don't really think that we're like necessary coleslaw lovers if we go somewhere we're not like oh my god there's coleslaw you know but the coleslaws that I make just have just such great flavors I really recommend that you try my coleslaw as a matter of fact I have 
As a matter of fact, I have a coleslaw recipe. It's in my very first video that I made on vegan comfort foods, and that's just my very favorite coleslaw. So before I finish with the cabbage, I'm gonna go ahead and grate this carrot. And then if I still have less than four cups, I'll just fill that in with a little bit more cabbage. You do not have to hand grate a carrot. I like to do it. It burns a couple calories, man. It keeps all my hand muscles like in shape. Does that make any sense? You know, as you age, we stop using a lot of our muscles, especially as women. We get people to carry things for us, lift things for us. We buy shredded cabbage and carrots instead of doing it ourselves. And little by little, we lose our muscle like tone, you know? And I already know that that's happening for me, but man, I'm gonna fight it along the way however I can. Awesome. and the green cabbage. Most of the time I use a combination of the two. Yeah, I think this is gonna be pretty close to four cups, so we're just gonna go with this. And now we're gonna make our delicious coleslaw sauce. So we've got our cashews. To that I'm gonna add two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And because there's an acid in here, we do wanna add something sweet. So I'm gonna add two tablespoons of maple syrup. This is just a really simple slaw recipe. I'm gonna put a pinch of salt in here. The last thing I'm gonna put in my coleslaw is just a little knob of ginger. Ginger goes really, really well with fresh coleslaw. To me, it just really gives it, it just elevates the flavor, you know? So I'm gonna put in about half an inch. And I'm just gonna just grate this into here. Let me go blend this up and let's see what it tastes like. So this is what it looks like. It's not super thick and that's okay. I'll give it a little bit of a taste. It's really good. It's got that acid from the apple cider vinegar. It's a little bit sweet from the maple syrup. I love it. I could literally just eat this. Okay, let me grab a bowl. I'm just gonna pour all of that dressing on there. And give this a good mix. So like I said, in a perfect world, you know, if we could let this sit for an hour, it would taste even better. Let me just give this a little bit of a taste. It's very good, very, very good. Now we just have to wait for our tempeh to finish cooking. All right. Our barbecue tempeh is cooked, our coleslaw is done. It is time to assemble our last potato, which is the barbecue potato. 
As you can see, the potato is soft. It's nice and cooked. This one is a little more crooked than the last guy's. <laughs> but again, I'm gonna cut him a little bit. Give it a little squeeze. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of barbecue sauce in this one and mix it up with the potato flesh just to give the flesh of the potato a little bit more flavor. It only takes an extra 30 seconds and trust me, you're gonna really love it. This is the easiest potato of the three. All right, so now that we have the flesh complete, mixed in with the barbecue sauce, I'm just gonna top it with a little bit of coleslaw. I mean, not a little bit, quite a bit of coleslaw. And then we're gonna put some of this tempeh on. just going to drizzle it with a little bit more barbecue sauce on top. You could actually make like another like a little sauce for this with some cashews and some seasonings. Maybe do some herbs in it and just drizzle that on top. That would be nice as well. There's one other thing that I wanted to put on top of this barbecue potato and that it needs some greens. Look at this guy, he is growing like crazy. This is just a store-bought one. I keep him in water and then I just take a piece off every so often. And this guy is really just growing like crazy. But this potato totally needs something green on top. It needs some color. And I love green onions. Do you guys love green onions like I do? It just really adds something that little something to that dish. Voila! All right, do we have a taster? Oh my god! A great fork. Hi. Hi. So we are gonna try the first potato that we made first, and that is the Southwest potato. Some big pieces of broccoli in here. See the trying to not get the whole thing and just. Alright, one whole piece of broccoli it is. Mmm. <laughs> that hummus is really Wow, this is so good. That hummus is really good. I love this. I could eat this like, okay, I love the Southwest one. I've had that a hundred times. I've never had this one before. I made this one and this is so good. That's really good. You want another bite? Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if we just stop or what? this potato before today it was just a concept that I had I knew I could pull it off I knew it'd be fantastic and so I made it and it's so good Thank God you did. Well. Mm -hmm. 
forget. Boom. Boom. So, what do you think overall of my sweet potatoes three different ways? They're great. I have a favorite though. What's your favorite? I think, uh, what's this one? Mediterranean. Mediterranean, that's my favorite. Because you like the hummus? The hummus and the hummus with the potatoes and the broccoli, that's great. It's really good together. I, yeah, I think they're all fantastic. You guys should have stuffed and loaded sweet potatoes today. If you enjoy this content, please be sure to like and subscribe. This channel only works if people interact. Thank you so much. Bye! Bye.